Hello and welcome to my rankings of the summer 2023 season anime. I want to say that I did not watch every single show this season as there was so much that comes out and like it would be impossible for me to uh, keep on top of it all. But I did watch quite a few shows. Okay, so to quickly explain my tier list, my ratings will be what I believe are the best shows of the season and should not be skipped. What is worth watching if you have some time and if nothing else is airing and you have time to kill, you can watch them. I also have Skip, which is what I have watched and felt like I've wasted my time. It's the I watched it so you don't have to sort of thing. For the next I have maybe in the future, which is shows I didn't watch, but I may want to watch if I have time in the future. And then shows I didn't watch, which is just straight out no interest. To kick things off with the shows I didn't watch, just by reading the synopsis at the time, um, they didn't interest me, or it was just an overload of Isekai. Ayakashi Triangle, Blue Orchestra, Bungo Stray Dogs, Classroom from Heroes, One Villainous to Saviour, Level 1 Demon Lord and One Room Hero, My Tiny Senpai. Now with rent a girlfriend Season 3, I did watch the first two seasons. I didn't mind the first, but the second one just made me hate myself for watching it. It was so painful to watch, and I don't want to go through that again. I've learnt my lesson, I'm not going to watch it. Rurunai Kenshin, only because I've never watched any of the older ones either. Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts. Saint Cecilia, Sugar Apple Fairy, Sunshine and Mirror, Sweet Reincarnation, Sinduality Noir, Temple, The Gene of AI, The Great Cleric, The Masterful Cat is Depressed, The Undead Girl Murder Farce. My unique skill makes me OP even at level 1. Okay, with the shows that I might watch in the future, I did want to watch Eden Zero Season 2. I did want to watch the reskinned fairy tale anime, but at the time when season one came out, I couldn't watch it. I think because it was on Disney and it was waiting for them all to release before coming out. So I fell behind and I'm not sure when I'll get around to it, but I hope I do. Helk looks interesting from the trailer I watched, but again, I'm watching so much already. It didn't make the cut. Um, so maybe I'll get around to it at a future date. If maybe next season doesn't have enough anime for me to watch. My Happy Marriage. I've heard good things about and I had overlooked this. So hopefully once again in future, if I have time, I'll watch it, but I can't right now. Dark Gathering might be a good horror, but as we all know, horror in anime is just lacking, but it might be good. So I do actually want to try and make time for this in future. Now that those are all out the way of the shows I didn't watch, that's just over half the anime of this season that I didn't watch, which still leaves quite a few down here at the bottom. So let's get straight into it. Going in order, am I actually the strongest? This will have to go in the nothing else tier. It's a normal Isekai, of course, with an overpowered MC, and no one seeing his potential. He gets discarded by his mother, who's known as the Flash Princess. And when I heard that, it sounded like a ripoff of my favorite lining Flash. Arsenal. It has its funny moments, he converts his sister into becoming an otaku, and I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing, but he's keeping to his personality trait and that's been a shut in. No matter how strong he gets, he wants to relax and be in his room all day, and he's trying his best. So for now, nothing else here. Ayaka is an original, which I had high hopes for. I'd like to watch at least one original a season, but this show is just a skip unfortunately. It's just a very average show, and it doesn't stand out. If you are into pretty boys, then this could be the show for you. It's a fantasy show with Yukito, who's the MC. Uh, has a lot of strength, but he just can't control it. And he's being taught how to control it by a drunk, known as Jinji, who runs off and leaves him a lot of the time to battle Aramitama, which are creatures born from negative energy. This show is basically about a boy trying to control his powers and defeating negative energy created beings. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just a skip, unfortunately. It's, there's nothing special about it. Bleach. Where else can this possibly go but in the must-watch tier? I was reading this on a weekly basis a long time ago, watching the anime years ago, and now the Thousand Year Blood War arc is finally being adapted, and this 
being the second part is just so good. The animation, the music, oh, it's just fantastic. When we finally got to see Rukia's Bankai, uh, when I was reading the manga and then finally seeing it animated, it just blew me away. It was amazing. But the anime speaks for itself. If you grew up reading or watching it, you're most likely watching it now and you can't be disappointed. I'm certainly not. Devil is a part-timer. This is a tough one and I may be judging it quite harshly, but I will say it is worth watching if there's nothing else. Purely because I want to believe it, it will get better. We've waited so long for season two to come out and it just hasn't delivered so far. The animation quality is just, I hate to say that, but mid. We are getting introduced to new characters and learning some backstory of the older ones. Alice Ramos is adorable. She's trying so hard to carry this show. And Emmy is just having a crisis about Mal and she doesn't know what she's doing with her life. And I can see the potential there with everything that's going on. But at the moment, it's just, I can't recommend watching season two, even though season one was so good. Dreaming Boy is a realist is watchable. It's not terrible enough to skip, but not one of those shows I'd recommend to people. So I'll say, if you want to watch something and there's nothing else, I would say just watch it. Uh, the main character, Wataru, is a nice guy. He helps so many different people out there and you get introduced to some nice girls as the show goes on. The problem with this show mainly is down to the girl Natsukawa. Simply put, she's annoying. She hated the attention she was getting from Wataru, but as soon as he stopped, she's like, oh, why is he not talking to me? I'm missing him. Like, and then he says one word to her and she goes back to, no, I hate you. Natsukawa is fighting hard for the worst girl of the season alongside Chizuru. I'm going to say it. Chizuru is not best girl from Rent a Girlfriend and Natsukawa is fighting her for the worst girl of the season or worst girl of the year. Duke of Death and His Maid. I almost didn't watch this uh, season one as it's a 3d anime and there aren't many i like as i don't like 3d anime in general but this show i recommend watching it is definitely worth a watch it's a show where the duke is cursed and anything he touches will die like the premise of that is okay but what really hooked me is his maid alice and it's a rom-com with alice teasing the duke by showing off skin <laughs> and causing our boy Bochan to get very embarrassed. Uh, it's a decent plot and it has me wondering why he was cursed and how they're going to remove it. Basic premise of the show, I want to know how they break the curse because it's great. It's, it's so funny, the interaction between the Duke and Alice. It's just the dynamic between the two of them is great and I can't wait for more. Oremia Peace is worth watching. If you watched the previous anime, it's just extra content that wasn't adapted the first time around. It should have been. I don't know why they left it out. They should have just been a 24 episode season instead of doing the 12 episodes, cutting it short and then go and revisiting it and adding more content. But now you've got to try and remember how it fits in the story. It's kind of all over the place, I feel, but definitely recommend watching it though. It's just extra content, really. If you really enjoyed Horimiya, it's a very good show. Juju Kaisen, of course, it's it's a skip, right? You can't go anywhere else. Nah, 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 of course not. It's a must watch. Uh, and if I didn't say that, I'd probably have to say goodbye to my very short anime creator life. <laughs> I'd get absolutely destroyed in the comments below, no doubt. Uh, it is a good show. And with the way I'm rating my shows, it is a must watch. Like who doesn't like watching more Gojo kicking ass because the first few episodes of this second season was great. I like the, it's not really a flashback, but what I guess it is kind of a story of Gojo and uh, what happened back then. It's so good. And Mappa is just knocking it out of the park with its animation as it does every time it animates anything. But we are having a long break just after a few episodes, which has killed the hype for me a little bit with like a three week break. I'm not sure why that happened, but it's, it's over. But at least it, uh, the break came after the like mini arc, the flashback. So yeah, obviously must watch, easy. Liar Liar, nothing else to hear. When I first saw and read the synopsis of this, I thought no game, no life. But after a couple of episodes, it was kind of like it, but really nothing like no game, no life. So the anime is all about playing games and how good you are. There is a evaluation system with seven stars being the highest. And depending on your star rating is how good of life you live on the island, basically. Stars also impact the games you play. When challenging players, you can add buffs or debuffs. 
and the higher rating star you have, the better the buffs, basically. And Hirito is the main character who accidentally becomes a seven star student through a lie, and now he has to keep that lie up. Uh, this could honestly go in the skip, but it's kind of just watchable, and that's where I'm gonna put it. It's not terrible, but it is quite average. And if there is nothing else to watch, I would, would just say watch it. Masamune Kun is worth watching. I remember when I watched the first season a few years ago, I think now, and I, I quite enjoyed it. Uh, I ended up reading the manga because the first season didn't end, and I didn't think a season two was going to be adapted because I think there was quite a big gap between them, but it did. And it gets, uh, gets messy towards the end, and I got excited to see who would win after the car crash and the dust settles, but it kept me hooked, which is what I want from an anime. Uh, I want the anime to keep me guessing, and when I did watch the first season, I was going through a harem phase at the time, uh, so I just had to watch it, and yeah, I liked it, so I'm gonna watch season two. I know what happens, but I have to watch it. So for me, it's worth watching, but maybe, no, I do recommend it to people. I actually do like the story. Misfit of Demon Academy, season two. Season one, absolutely amazing. Anos, Baldi Goad, is a chad absolute chad season one highly worth watching season two stopped after a few episodes last season it wasn't as good but i have hope again that that story has potential i i just hope and pray anime gets better if the first half is poor a little bit but it's struggling but yeah i'm just waiting for more to come out so i can just start enjoying it again because it should be good anos should carry and hopefully he does Shoko tensei one of the best isekais has to go down in a must watch one of my favorite of all time definitely uh today anyway and after what happened in the first season with rudius and a certain girl he's going through a lot of difficulties and you can and you feel for him you feel you feel for him and what happened and it takes time to recover and he still makes mistakes even though he is a much older man he is currently what a 15 year old boy and he's going through some stuff so it's understandable and i'm really looking forward to how this season second season is going especially with where he is currently uh i don't want to say too much because spoilers but yeah where he's currently i i can't wait i i get so hyped each week i watch this for more i just want more reborn as a vending machine is a skip straight up <laughs> Uh, I wasn't going to watch this because when I was looking through the seasonal anime, I saw this and I was like, this is a joke. And I do like isekais. They are repetitive and you know what you're getting. So when I did decide to watch this, I was right. It's exactly what I expected. It is a skip. There's, it's not worth your time watching it. It has its moments and I am laughing at it, but I'm laughing at how ridiculous things are and so many what the fuck is actually happening right now moments throughout the show it could go in a tier above but i couldn't in good faith make any good recommendations about it i could not recommend it to anyone unless you just want to laugh at a show and like think what is going on reign of the seven spellblades is watchable but i can't say i recommend it but if you are looking into watching it i think it does get better after episode six. Once the plot kind of gets revealed, the anime basically follows these six students who become friends at this magic school, all with different unique backgrounds and magical abilities. There's a giant labyrinth under the school, which only comes out at night. There's a coliseum down there. Demi-human experiments happen down there. Quite a lot happens in this labyrinth and the teachers are like, good luck, you might die in there, but only the strong will survive. It's absolutely crazy. <laughs> how the teachers just like yeah some of you may die but the strong will survive so yeah it's it's okay it is okay rise up for me straight up must watch it's based off a game that i really enjoyed playing i absolutely love the game the first one's not as good as the next two but i really enjoyed it i've played all three of them and this show was just easily a must watch i had to watch it so riser and her friends basically go on an adventure or they leave the island on an adventure and they run into trouble and they are saved by 
Leela, and an alchemist, Empul. The three friends get inspired by these people, and Riser learns alchemy, and Lent learns how to fight, and stuff like that. And over the time, they go on more adventures, and Riser becomes a better alchemist, and Lent becomes a better fighter. You get to see many, many different things. The animation is exactly what I wanted from it. It's great. And it's keeping true to the game, which it should do anyway, but it's great. I'm actually enjoying it very much. It's a bit slow at the start because, well, like most JRPGs, it's world building a little bit for the first little bit, but it is only 12 episodes this season. I hope they're not just going to rush the ending because that makes no sense and there's going to be an announcement for like a second part because I really want more. Spy Classroom Season 2. I, was, I would rate it worth watching. Season 1 was pretty good and it hooked me. I wanted to know more about each character's backstory and how they became spies. And there's eight of them, so plenty of opportunity to learn about them. So the main plot is Klaus took in eight blow pass spies from eight different spy schools and brought them together to go help him complete the impossible mission. He has to train them to be better and work together, but it's proving to be a hard task as each girl has a different method and a different talent and a different way of thinking. That was season one. And then season two seems to be going through the backstories or extra content uh, revealing more of the talents of each girl moving on the girl i like forgot her glasses this was very difficult and i almost put it in the watch if nothing else tier but i will say it is worth a watch i started watching this because i was hoping it was going to be a wholesome show which it is and i got exactly what i wanted and that's kind of a phase i've been going through this year um i've been watching a lot of wholesome shows there's only so much that can happen with a girl forgetting her glasses and she's going to be doing it for 12 episodes so it's kind of hard to believe it's going to be entertaining for that long but so far it's held up but the relationship development between the two is actually quite nice and it's uh, very adorable to see and to round it off the animation of Mai's hair is insane. I love the animation style. It's very different. Well, it's not very different, but it is different from what I usually watch. And there's so much budget in just her hair alone. It's crazy. Zom 100 is definitely worth a watch. I think a lot of people can probably relate to being overworked. And once you're free of those restraints, the world just opens up. So basically, the show is about an overworked corporate employee whose spirit is broken and finds it hard to motivate himself until one day he wakes up and there's a zombie apocalypse and he realizes he never has to go to work again and he's free to do whatever he wants. So he makes a bucket list of things he wants to do be before turning into a zombie, which is an amazing concept to a story, I think, <laughs> because I think a lot of people can relate to that. They just, they're doing the same thing over and over again. And it's like, I want to do something else. They just can't quite get out of that rut and it takes a zombie apocalypse to do that. But yeah, the animation is absolutely, uh, once again, the animation is really good. There's no shortage of good animation this season. It's just the plot of the shows is quite average. But yeah, so basically that's it for my ratings of the summer 2023 season. I felt like it was a very average season. There were standouts, but overall worse than previous seasons. Uh, you may have noticed my taste in anime. I do watch a lot of mid shows and I just can't help myself. I like to give shows a chance and I don't often drop them no matter how bad they are. That's how I managed to get through season two of Rent a Girlfriend. But yeah, this is my first seasonal review and I will be doing more, maybe live next time because I do mainly want to stream. And to let you guys know, I stream most days around 4.30 JST and on weekends, usually earlier. But yeah, for now, that's it for me. Until next time, bye.